Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jeremy Ofono, and I'm joined here today with my fellow senior policy analyst, Kerry Weller and Mukhtar Yali Ba with Public Services and Procurement Canada. Today's task at hand will focus on improving the federal procurement process. This presentation will provide a brief background on the scale of the problem, its impacts, highlight the underlying root cause, examine the procurement process in more depth, and propose a two-stage solution to address both immediate needs and long-term improvements required. If we could go to the next slide, please. For our case, it's useful to look at the Auditor General's reports for two of Canada's largest and most recent federal procurement mishaps, starting with the arrive Canada. To curb the coronavirus, Canada enforced mandatory quarantines for incoming travelers under the Quarantine Act. Initially, paper forms were used, but they proved inefficient for timely data entry and physical distancing. The Public Health Agency of Canada then requested Canada Border Services Agency to create the Digital Arrive Canada. The purpose was, was for electronic submission of contact and health information. Launched in April 29, 2020, the app facilitated enforcement of quarantine measures. However, there were challenges. Cost estimate for ArriveCan were approximately $59.5 million with an additional $6.2 million for integrating a digital customs and immigration form. The CBSA's reliance on expensive external contractors raised concerns as did lapses in procurement process, processes, such as awarding contracts without proper facilitation of documentation and so on. Notably, GC Strategies, the initial contractor, also contributed to the defining requirements for subsequent contracts. The key highlights here are, one, there was inadequate financial record keeping. And due to this, the exact cost of the project could not be determined. And so the Auditor General had to estimate it at $59.5 million. As stated before, there was a heavy reliance on consulting firms. The dependency on GC strategies coupled with frequent project amendments resulted in escalating costs. Lastly, there was a lack of value for money-based decisions. As stated before, there were quite a bit of amendments and this increased costs. But even so, there were no new, deliver new deliverables added. I'd like us to take a brief mental note in, rem in remembering that these observations fall under the category of inadequate contract management. Moving on to the Phoenix, um, <clears throat> to the Phoenix payroll system. In 2016, the federal government introduced Phoenix to pay, uh, to, pay uh, to automate payments for public servants. However, the system quickly encountered issues with many employees experienced incorrect or, or delayed payments. By the middle of 2017, over 150,000 employees had outstanding payment requests with an average wait time of over three months and some waiting over a year. The error rates in paychecks significantly rose from 30% to 51%. By mid-2017, over $250 million was owed in payment errors that needed correction. The key highlights here would be that uh, payment requests quadrupled to 150,000 and processing times may have averaged three times, but there was a recorded 59,000 employees waiting for over a year. I'm sure that you can imagine waiting so long to receive uh, your salary on time and adequately would affect your livelihood. I'm sure that goes without saying that mortgages were not paid, uh, credit was not paid back, and loans were defaulted on. The Auditor General notes that there was limited analysis on underlying root causes of the project's failure. One, Phoenix was not designed to handle such a complex uh, shift work rules to begin with. This is what led to errors and backlogs. There was also a lack of clear governance. There was no comprehensive governance structure for to provide strategic direction, define roles, and coordinate the resolution of issues in a sustainable manner. There was also a lack of a strategic approach. With so many issues rising up one after another, Instead of having an integrated, comprehensive, long-term plan, um, the strategy, the, we followed a rather reactive approach. Once again, I would like to point out that these elements all fall under poor contract management. If we could go to the next slide, please. 
The thing is with project poor with poor management is that it has a trickling effect that can lead to a number of other issues. One, cost overruns. Various contracts contracts experienced huge uh, increases in average in uh, average prices, and it was estimated that they would go over one hundred and sixty percent of the original prices. There was a lack of project review with projects such as Phoenix. Uh, Major failures could be attributed to issues such as inadequate testing, uh, lack of oversight and communication issues between stakeholders. There's also a case of unfair contract awarding. As I mentioned before, with the case of ArriveCan and GC strategies, there are questions about whether some vendors get preferential treatment. There was an underinvestment in the procurement system itself as well. There's no, there was no clear upgrade strategy for aging IT systems. Since efforts are not directed towards staff training in departments, this is why we have to rely on consulting firms instead. And lastly, a severe lack of accountability. With Phoenix again, there were, there were multiple accountability gaps and repeated scenarios where problems were buried. Uh, next slide, please. What is the impact of such a broken system? Cost overruns can, can lead directly to misuse of public funds. Unfair contracting practices discourage competition and innovation from a wide range of potential vendors. A damaged reputation of the public service and confidence in our ability to deliver priorities on time. And project failure. The thing is with procurement is that it is very important to the functionality of federal departments. It allows it allows departments to access vital goods and expertise in a flexible and efficient manner. With the federal government purchasing approximately $22 billion in goods and services each year, I'm sure we can understand that we need to secure procurement as it is key to enabling departmental operations. Now that I've highlighted contract mismanagement as the root cause of issues with the procurement process, the scope of the issues and its impacts, I will now leave it to my colleague, Kerry, to outline our proposed course of action. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Next slide, please. So our random recommended option, as Jeremy indicated, we decided on a long-term and a short-term option. Uh, our short-term option is a committee in the out of our department to stop the bleeding from procurement contracts. The long-term committee, is, which is the long-term part, is out of the Treasury Board Secretariat, and it is going to take a deeper dive into the issue. And it is going to be examining the procurement process in the phases of contract and contract management. This approach is checks all the boxes as it brings transparency, builds public confidence and identifies realistic improvements. Also worthy of note is the budget con considerations are minimal as people will be seconded from other areas. And we would also like to add that alternate options were considered such as an independent external audit, but it was ruled out as uh, transparency and integrity we're at the forefront of our thinking. Next slide, please. So the value of the option, uh, as you can see the presence of the Treasury Board Secretariat, the question is why did we choose that? Um, we tried to address the four impacts that we thought were the most important in this issue. Um, contracts, accountability, underinvestment and procurement process and budget. So those four items are all addressed by our approach and the presence of outside experts addresses uh, again, the transparency, the fairness and the public confidence issues. Next slide, please. And I will turn the reins over to my colleague Mukhtar for short term. Merci, Curry. En effet, qu'est-ce qu'on propose La première solution que nous on propose, c'est pour atténuer les conséquences de la mauvaise gestion des contrats, serait de mettre en place une équipe d'intervention. En effet, 
Cette équipe d'intervention sera composée des hauts fonctionnaires du ministère Services publics et approvisionnement Canada que nous représentons. Il s'agira du sous-ministre et des sous-ministres adjoints aux entreprises et services de paie conformément à l'organigramme du ministère lui-même. Qu'est-ce qu'on demande à, à, ce, à ce comité Le principal mandat de cette équipe temporaire sera d'atténuer les effets secondaires de la mauvaise gestion des contrats d'approvisionnement en attendant des mesures à long terme et pérennes. Donc, en quelque sorte, ce que nous voulons ici, c'est de mettre en place un système d'urgence qui va stopper l'hémorragie. Pour ce faire, ces axes d'intervention de cette équipe seront les suivants. Premièrement, faire un suivi technique et financier sur les projets d'approvisionnement actuels qui sont susceptibles d'avoir des dépassements de coûts initial. En effet, comme nous, nous l'avons dit dans l'introduction, c'est que le problème que nous avons aujourd'hui, c'est un problème où les contrats que le gouvernement du Canada donne aux contractants subissent des dépassements de coûts souvent énormes. Nous avons même des exemples qui disent qu'en moyenne, euh, les projets d'approvisionnement du gouvernement du Canada sont dépassés de 167 Donc, voilà notre problème. Ainsi, cette équipe technique sera mise en place pour venir faire un suivi technique et savoir quelles sont les brèches ou où sont les failles et mettre des solutions et des mesures tampons. Deuxièmement, ce que nous, devons, ce que nous demandons à cette équipe, c'est d'informer les contractants, c'est-à-dire les les entreprises qui ont ces projets, que conformément aux procédures administratives mises en place, des amendes seront fixées à tout projet qui fait une augmentation de coûts exagérée, comme nous l'avons vu auparavant. En plus, aucune modification de contrat ne sera effectuée tant que le travail de comité d'examen à long terme que nous allons vous présenter euh, ultérieurement ne sera complété. Donc, ce qu'on veut faire ici, c'est mettre en place des mesures tampons pour arrêter les, les augmentations de coûts exagérées avant de savoir quelles sont les recommandations du comité d'examen final. Troisièmement et dernièrement, cette équipe mettra en place une formation mise à jour pour les employés qui sont directement liés à l'attribution des contrats dans le but d'offrir de, de meilleures pratiques de gestion. Enfin, il est important de rappeler ici que ces mesures sont temporaires et c'est une solution à court terme pour lutter contre le problème. Vu que le problème principal, c'est le dépassement de coûts, nous, nous devons savoir avec une expertise quels sont les moyens ou les failles qui sont dans le système et les régler. Ainsi, je passe la parole à ma collègue Curry qui va nous expliquer notre deuxième option qui cette fois-ci est à long terme. Merci Mukhtar. Next slide, please. So, improving long term, what now? So, to make sure that our long term goals are met, we are proposing a committee of senior level civil servants on, a, on the committee along with two business experts. Uh, the mandate is to, again, look at the phases of contract management and contracting to ensure their improvement. Next slide. The committee will be composed of Treasury Board Secretariat and again, their mandate makes them the most logical step for this committee um, in terms of spending, in terms of setting policies, in terms of IT expertise, in terms of having the framework for monitoring department performance. They seemed like the logical choice. And as for the expert level, the outside personnel, uh, we will be pulling two experts from the field of public management and business consulting, and we'll be looking in the fields of academia, possibly retired um, business consultants, things such as that. Next slide, please. Now, what exactly will be reviewed? So the Auditor General has definitely identified um, shortcomings with, re with respect to Arrive Can and um, Phoenix. Um, we also consulted the reports on procuring complex information technology solutions and modernizing information technology systems. And we found that the problem does lie in the contracting and contract management phases. So thus the focus of our review, review will be on these two phases and will include an assessment of things like bid solicitation, requests for information, qualifications and proposals, bid evaluation and selection, basis of payment and contract management. 
Uh, for example, um, for the uh, bid solicitations, um, we will be assessing the request for information. So assessing which suppliers are invited to submit and why an assessment of the review team of the members and independent consultants involved in that process. Ainsi, pour mettre en place euh, ce comité d'examen et encadrer son travail, nous avons besoin de lui accorder du temps et déterminer quel temps va être possible pour régler ce problème, parce que ici, nous avons un problème de confiance du public à l'égard des institutions. Donc, euh, nous, de notre côté, nous avons choisi un temps de 12 mois à travers des... Ce temps est justifié à travers... Euh, l'exemple de plusieurs autres comités qui ont été mis en place par plusieurs départements du gouvernement du Canada. Généralement, nous avons observé que ces comités d'examen prennent plusieurs mois ou des fois même plusieurs années pour mettre en place, pour donner des recommandations. Et ici, nous avons un problème urgent qui est la confiance du public à l'égard de ces institutions, mais aussi un dépassement de coûts. Donc, nous avons obtenu une période de 12 mois, les quatre premiers mois, vont être utilisés pour la mise en place du comité, c'est-à-dire la formation du comité, mais aussi de déterminer quel mandat sera donné à ce comité-là. Ensuite, les, proches, les, les, les trois mois suivants, nous allons demander à ce comité de nous fournir des recommandations pré préliminaires. Ceux-ci ne sont pas des recommandations finales, mais nous demandons ceci pour savoir si notre solution à court terme est en emphase avec les recommandations préliminaires du comité d'examen. Ensuite, nous sommes conscients que pour mettre en place euh, et réussir un tel projet, nous avons besoin de bien communiquer et la réussite de ce projet repose évidemment sur une bonne communication. Ceci étant dit, vu que nous avons en face ici un problème de confiance à l'égard du public, c'est évident que nous devons mettre en place une communication pour ce public, c'est-à-dire les Canadiens et les Canadiennes. Ainsi, nous avons une, deux stratégies de communication. Premièrement, une communication interne et externe. Donc, nous allons utiliser les, les, trois, prochains, les trois mois suivants après les recommandations préliminaires pour mettre en place ceci. Enfin, nous allons demander à ce comité d'examen de nous fournir les recommandations et le rapport final d'ici le 12e mois. Prochaine diapositive, s'il vous plaît. Ainsi, dans l'introduction, nous avons défini que le problème, une partie du problème ici, c'est la confiance du public à l'égard euh, de ces institutions. Ainsi, la communication interne va être, euh, notamment, va mettre l'emphase euh, sur rassurer les employés de notre département que ce genre de problème ne sera pas ici dans le futur. Et la communication externe va va se concentrer sur la confiance du public à l'égard des institutions, c'est-à-dire rassurer les Canadiens que nous mettons en Prochaine diapositive, s'il vous plaît. Ainsi, aujourd'hui, il est indiscutable que notre processus d'approvisionnement est défaillant, ce qui entraîne des dépassements de coûts et nuit à la confiance du public dans nos capacités à gérer efficacement les fonds publics. Face à cette situation, il est impératif d'agir rapidement pour atténuer les coûts de dépassement de projet. En conclusion, nous devons agir de manière décisive pour remédier à nos lacunes en matière de passation de marché et d'approvisionnement. En prenant des mesures à la fois court et long terme, nous pouvons reconstruire la confiance du public à notre égard, assurer une gestion plus efficace des fonds publics et garantir le succès de nos projets futurs, que ce soit dans notre département ou dans le gouvernement du, du Canada en général. Merci beaucoup pour votre attention à lors de notre présentation. Merci beaucoup pour votre exposé. Ça fait bien drôle, c'était vraiment utile. Um, étant donné que vous avez utilisé uh, les deux langues, um, n'hésitez pas à uh, répondre dans votre langue de choix. Um, et aussi, nous allons maintenant prendre environ 10 minutes Um, de poser des questions. Vos réponses à ces questions comptera pour 25% de la note finale. Donc, um, uh, Philippe, uh, souhaitez-vous poser uh, votre question? Oui, merci beaucoup. Donc, un, un grand merci à l'équipe pour euh, l'excellente présentation que vous nous avez donnée aujourd'hui. C'est très apprécié. Euh, 
you have recognized in your presentation that procurement is key in helping government department in delivering their services. I'm mostly interested in the question of outcomes. Um, so when you framed your recommendation, how did you take into consideration the importance of delivering results for Canadians by in using the procurement process? So procurement is a key enabler in that. So how do you make sure that what you put in your recommendation is going to keep an attention on results for Canadians? And what, in your sense, while we are implementing those short-term and long-term solutions, what are the key risks that may impede department in achieving those outcomes by leveraging procurement as uh, as we implement your recommendations? That would be my two questions. I'm sorry, uh, may you, uh, uh, could you repeat the, the first question, please? The first question is really, you recognize the importance of procurement. Mm -hmm. It's a tool that departments can leverage in delivering their services. How will you keep, keep, keep in consideration the importance of achieving outcomes for Canadians when you apply the lens of that review? Well, uh, I believe that the other cases where federal procurement has had issues such as, as, as ArriveCan and Phoenix, where um, public trust has now been thrown into the mix because it, we, there's now the perception that we can no longer deliver projects on time and efficiently. So I think the concept of public trust will be a repeated uh, theme uh, seen throughout uh, the process and uh, the reviews that the committee will carry out. Uh, experts have been brought into the scenario so that we can get uh, uh, key highlights on things that we may have missed, uh, such as, as we've noticed before, there's been a reliance on experts. So it may not be such a bad thing to rely on experts to get our to look at what the situation might be. And also these experts will sort of handle external communications. We thought that it might be better for experts to be involved in press releases that go out to the public and to the media so that we can keep them updated on uh, the review process. Thank you. And on the, the second question with regard to risk, have you identified any potential risk with the proposed approach? One of the potential risks, and I would say, I'd arguably one of the uh, the largest risks would be that our proposed solutions step out of our estimated time. We have a uh, long term solution for over a year. We have a short term solution uh, ranging from about uh, six months and less, and that would be our biggest risk because it also adds on to the uh, perception that public service is not capable of uh, delivering what we were set out to do. Thank you for the answer. Um, Patrick, uh, would you like to ask another question? Yeah, sure, Donna. And first I'd like to say, well done uh, team, uh, lots, lots of work in this, lots of effort. So uh, kudos for that. Euh, normalement, je m'intéresse euh, au rôle de l'industrie et des, des vendeurs dans, euh, dans la solution ou d'apporter des solutions aux problèmes de aux défis des, des acquisitions. J'aimerais ça prendre mon opportunité de ma question pour euh, poser une, une question. Mouktar t'a parlé euh, dans le, le short term, dans la court term, que euh, il allait plus avoir d'amendement qui serait fait au contrat euh, jusqu'à temps que la, la revue euh, long terme soit complétée. Puis, je serais intéressé à savoir, euh, vous avez pensé aux risques, euh, peut-être comment gérer les risques potentiels de, de dire, de, de prendre la décision de ne plus faire d'amendement à des contrats quand on sait que ça peut être possible que ces amendements-là sont légitimes, sont importants pour le, le côté opérationnel. Donc, je serais intéressé à avoir euh, vos opinions là-dessus. Euh, oui, merci pour euh, votre question. Évidemment, nous avons 
opposé à penser au... À... Parce que ce qu'il faut savoir ici, c'est que nous, nous, nous ne voulons pas euh, restreindre ces entreprises-là, parce qu'il faut savoir que ces entreprises-là, c'est des entreprises avant tout canadiennes, qui ont des responsabilités envers leurs employés et qui contribuent à l'économie canadienne, évidemment. Donc, nous ne voulons pas les restreindre ici, mais on ne veut juste pas qu'il y ait des, des, des augmentations exagérées. Parce que récemment, ce que nous avons vu dans certains projets en faisant nos recherches, c'est qu'il y a des augmentations qui sont des fois exagérées et des fois qui ne sont même qui sont pas justifiées, vraiment qui ne sont pas justifiables. Donc, ce que nous voulons faire ici, c'est de mettre des mesures tampons, des mesures tampons. Et évidemment, l'équipe que l'équipe de hauts fonctionnaires que nous allons mettre en place vont voir tous ces projets du cas par cas. Donc, euh, évidemment, les, pro, les gros projets à haut risque, ils seront, ça sera de leur responsabilité de voir les projets au cas à cas et comment, parce que ici, la solution, c'est qu'on ne veut pas que les On ne veut pas que les entreprises soient restreintes ou, ne, ou, ou pensent qu'on les oblige à faire quelque chose qu'elles ne veulent pas faire. Mais en même temps, il faut savoir qu'en tant que gouvernement, on a une responsabilité envers les Canadiens. On a, un, on a des finances publiques à gérer. Et évidemment qu'on qu ne qu qu veut pas qu'il y ait des exagérations de coût. Donc, il y, aura des, il y aura du cas par cas et l'équipe... Euh, l'équipe du ministère de hauts fonctionnaires, qui sont quand même des experts, vont, vont, vont voir tout ceci. Excellent. Merci beaucoup, Mouka. Merci, Mouka. Et merci pour la question, Patrick. Uh, Ron, est-ce que vous voulez uh, poser une question? Oui, merci. Et merci beaucoup pour la présentation. C'était très bien fait. Euh, ma question, c'est pour la, la solution à court terme. Euh, selon vous, euh, quels, sont les, euh, quels sont les principaux risques euh, qui, euh, qui pèsent sur le, la solution à court terme et euh, comment gériez-vous euh, ces risques? We did discuss um, the closed nature of the solution as being a potential risk. Um, we did um, sort of circumvent that with the communications, assuring the public and, and civil servants that we are looking at it and that we are you know, in the process of a two-tiered approach. So I think that we, while it may be regarded as a closed process, we are sort of putting steps in place to make it more transparent than many of the closed processes would be. Very good, thank you very much. Thank you so much. We have a one minute and 47 seconds. Michelle, would you like to just ask a quick question and see if uh, we don't wanna let them waste their two minutes, Michelle? Sure, I'll, I'll ask something just very quickly. I'm just wondering, at the beginning of the presentation, you had outlined some issues that you were going to address with your um, with your proposal. So for instance, you know, with the cost overruns, lack of project review, unfair contract awarding. I'm wondering if maybe you can shed some light on how you decided on the, that those were the significant issues that you wanted to focus on. Were there others? that uh, issues that you also identified, but you, you determined at some point that they were not part of this list, or maybe just shed some light on your, uh, on the analysis you did on the issues. Uh, <clears throat> I'll be happy to take that answer, that question on. Um, well, really we did, we wanted to focus on sort of the questions you taught, the issues that you touched on because we, I we noticed that they do fall under the sort of the spectrum or the umbrella of contract mismanagement, uh, mismanagement in general. And uh, I we also noticed that these were key themes in both uh, Auditor General's reports for the Arrive Cat situation and the uh, Phoenix situation as well. So we believe that there's a common theme here and 
it would be best to sort of tackle the underlying issue to have a, a comprehensive strategic plan moving forward. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Merci, mais votre temps de parole est, est, est écoulé. Uh, so we do have to move on, but thank you so much for um, your advice. We will take that into account. <laughs>